Hi guys, welcome to another video from Table Podcast. So today we've got a, another video in our Let's Paint range. So hopefully you've already seen the video of me painting uh, Seamus from the Shadows of Red Chapel crew. If you haven't, I suggest you go and watch it now. All right. So that should have been enough time for you to watch it. So today, I'm going to be painting his totem, the copycat killer. So what I've decided to do with this guy is to paint him in similar colours to Seamus, but also brighter. Because whereas Seamus is a uh, Adenzine and Malifo, the copycat killer is very much a, um, a thing of magic and mystery, I feel, so he'll be an overall brighter scheme. I'm also going to reverse some of the colours on Seamus. So, Seamus, I've given a brown coat and a green pair of trousers. Where's the copycat killer? I'm going to go for a green coat. I'm not going to do the trousers grey. Sorry, I'm not going to do the trousers brown because his shoes will also be good brown and that would just all blend in a bit too much. So what I'm going to do with this guy is I'm going to paint the the leather brown in the same way that I've done. Shameless, because I've basically done Shameless with a, a leather coat. Um, and then I'm going to paint, paint his trousers a light grey colour to add in some more contrast and to break everything up a bit. The hats are going to be similar. I did tie, toy with the idea of giving him a green top hat, but then I did wonder does that make him a little bit too much like a leprechaun and I'm also toying with the idea of giving him red hair but again though he's obviously meant to be a leprechaun I'm worried about making him too much of a leprechaun so we'll see how we go so if you watch the last video you'll have seen me go through every single step pretty much as I went through it painting. What I'm going to do on this video for the base coating steps is I'll just say to you, now I'm going to base coat this area in this color. Stop the video and come back once it's base coated. Because I figure you all know how to base coat and what you actually want to see is how I take from that base coat up to um, the finished model. So that's the bit that I'll actually show. So this this video probably won't run as long as the Seamus one did uh, but hopefully you'll still get as much from it so without further ado what I'm going to do to begin with in much the same way that I did, did with Seamus I'm just going to play Seamus here for a start to put him out of the way of my paint is I'm going to start with the skin and with the trousers. So the skin, I'm going to start off with Kislev Flesh, which if you remember from the Seamus video, that's one up from what I started off with Seamus. And I'll then mix in this Celestial Grey when I come back to show you the highlights to highlight that up. And for the trousers, I'm going to be starting with I just realised I've got the wrong paint there. Not with base grey. Just bear with me one moment, the best laid plans of mice and men and all that. And I appear to have completely lost the paint that I'm going to use. So I will show you that when I come back and I've done it. Um, I'll be using a dark blue grey colour for that. So I'll pause the video now, base coat those two areas. Again, I'll use a couple of base coats, which I've got a nice um, even finish. 
couple of thin base coats rather than one thick base coat. Aha! And I've now signed a layer dark grey blue. Again, it's a model air colour. I do quite a lot of work with an airbrush normally, so that's why I have a lot of the model air cups. So yeah, so I will do a pause now, base coat the trousers, base coat the flesh, then I'll come back. So I shall see you guys in a bit. Okay, and we're back. So trousers, flesh, undercoated. Now because this is a smaller model, I'm not going to be able to do both the next steps at once. For, uh, fear of uh, getting the paints running into each other. Slightly water down that. Uh, Raikland flush shade. Flesh wash. On the skin. This is the messier part, so. I've done this first. Mm, I just realised I did that off camera, I do apologise. So we have a flesh wash. So that now needs to dry. So if you'll excuse me, with the magic of television, I shall be back when it's dry. Well, I just realised that the last five minutes of me painting, I've forgotten to press record. So I'll just explain what I've done so far. I've been highlighting up the trousers with dry brushing. So I've taken a dark blue-grey and I've been adding light blue-grey to it to lighten it. So. This is after two highlights. And I'm going to do another one by adding in light blue to this. Just lightening it off every time. making sure I take more of my brush each time. So the first layer of highlights was almost an overbrush rather than a dry brush. And I've just had a very in-depth conversation uh, purely with myself about the differences. So you have to believe me that was an amazing conversation. So now you're starting to see some real definition coming into those trousers. So now I'm going to do a final highlight. Of pure. White, blue, grey. So pure, but of course I haven't cleaned my brush off yet between these um, dry brushes, so there will be a little bit of the previous colour still on, on there. So there we go, nice light trousers.
keep on forgetting to refocus the uh, camera in between moving the model, which I do apologise. So next up, we want to do that flash. So I've already bought a wash on. So I'm going to have to use this dry brush because this is, this is one of my smaller dry brushes. So I'm just now making sure that it's fully dry. The first layer of highlight is just going to be this dry brush on. You'll notice I've changed how I'm doing this from Seamus. I've, I've learnt from painting that model. This is my first Mali Fair models that I've painted. And the thing I find about any model company's models. They're all sculpted slightly differently, which means that we get ever such a slightly different um, effect. Now what I'm going to do with here, because I still have some of that white, blue, grey left, I'm going to cheat and mix it in. rather than using my um, Celestial Grey, because it's a pretty similar colour, they're both blue greys. I think that's enough for the face. Really pleased with how that's come out. Right, once again, refocus on something. This is, a, as an aside, one of the problems we're using an iPhone as a camera. Although they are fantastic, they're not as good as a there's a regular camera for um, excuse me, refocusing, which is why part of the um, if we ever get enough money from our Patreon, uh, we will be investing in at least one quote unquote proper camera, which will make painting videos so much easier. So, next up, I'm going to paint the lovers. So Base cut flat bearing, which I'll do off camera, and then I'll come back and show you the dry brushing. So I shall be back in a moment. So we're back, and I've done the lever, which on this model is his shoes. So now we need to um, highlight that up. So I already have my brown. I'm going to add in some flesh. Give us a lighter broom. I really like flesh for highlighting up rounds into levers. If you think about it, leather is tan flesh. So 
so it makes sense that it would work as a light cover collar. I find that it does work really well. I'm also finding with this guy. Because he's only got that one. point on the ground. Um, he's uh, not the most stable of models. I'm dry brushing. Now, I think for the Seamus model I used the Cadian flush, which is obviously a darker flush down to highlight, but I've already said that I wanted copycat to be lighter so the fact I'm using a lighter flesh colour will give me a, uh, a lighter colour. Just painting it all as dried brushes. Because you basically you look at a model and you think, oh, is that right? Mm, I'm not sure. I'll just add a bit more. So now We get to do the fun, the fun part, and the fun part is we get to do his coat. And I'm going to do his coat again. A lighter green, and I also want to do a brighter green. So, in a moment, I'm going to pause this, base coat and wag brush again. Then when we come back, I'm going to highlight up through Snarlsnick. I think I then may start adding in some buff to the snarl stick to uh, raise it above that further. And then I'm going to, I'm going to glaze that with uh, Weight Watchers Green to uh, take that back to a proper green colour to give us a brighter colour. So that's all about to take place now off, well, so the base coat is going to take place off camera so I shall see you in a bit. Okay, so we're back. Base coat of green. So now, we can already have our wag flush out. Throw in some snarl snake. And let's start to dry brush this guy up. Well, you know that as I begin, um, I'm 
I know I've got a lot of paint still on. This brush. So I've started off quite lightly dry brushing, so I'm not been loads and then there's more and more paints coming off the brush itself. I can dry brush on more and sort of harder. So that's my first dry brush and that already looks so much better than if I'd have just gone straight from my highlight colour because my base colour is my highlight colour. So now, start putting on a lighter layer. So we really want this going to stand out. We get it along that coattail. It's not like that, we're also blending it into the underside. Now, we're about the same level of highlight. I want to take this one higher. So I'm going to put in my buff. happen to know from when I've put this out and it's separated that buff actually contains a decent amount of green. Might not look like it. So you know what we have there? What we have there is a very light green. I was going to say a toothpaste colour, but my toothpaste was that colour. I don't think I'd use that toothpaste. So now we're going to apply much lighter. Dry brush here. and deciding if that's enough and you know what let's just get shameless up here again it's much lighter 
Bunch of names now. I'm in two minds as to whether or not to go back and glaze over the top of that because I quite like that as it is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a watered down glaze. I want to bring out the green a little bit more, but not too much. So I'm going to pause this for a moment to allow that to dry fully. I'm going to come back, add on the water that down glazed, then we'll have another quite a long pause this time. Um, because in between takes, I've actually been using a, um, a low powered hairdryer to dry off uh, my paints and my washes. I can't do that with the glaze because I can't risk the glaze moving once it's on. So I shall be back shortly. Okay so we're back. Um, I want to apply a glaze now but I want to apply a, um, a water down glaze. Now I'm not going to water it down with water. I'm going to water it down with lamy and medium. Because what I want is I want the glaze to maintain the same properties. Um, but be a weaker colour, so you will have to trust me that I've put some lamy medium down there because obviously you can't see it. So, some lamy medium. Some way watches green. And now we're going to apply a glaze. Now the difference between a wash and a glaze is quite simple but also incredibly important. So apply a wash. I want that wash to pool. in the recesses because that's what will add shading to my model. If I apply a glaze I don't want there to be any pooling, I want it to be an even coat over the entire model so it alters the colour of the entirety of the piece. So that's now glazed. Obviously that's shiny at the moment, that will that shininess will go down as it dries. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to allow that to dry. As I've just said I have been using hair dries in between um, takes to make sure it's dry because that speeds the process up. Can't do that with the glaze, at least not to begin with. I need it to dry so that it won't move around on the model. So this is the point where I go and get myself some lunch and then when I come back, although the glaze may not be fully dry, it will it will have gone from being um, a liquid to just being slightly tacky. At that point I can apply some heat with the hair dry and dry it off fully. So I shall be back in a moment. So we're back, the green has, the glaze has dried, quite a nice bright green we've got going on there. So next up, <coughs> um, I've decided against my better judgement that I'm going to go with a um, ginger for the hair. I say against my better judgment because it's one of those colours that well, nobody ever really knows how to paint properly. So this is what I'm going to try. 
Oh well that's not work because that's still wet. So first, add an area palette that's not still wet with paint. And then, I'm going to mix some Wild Rider Red with some brown. Wild Rider Red is actually an orange colour. So, I am going to use that as my base coat. And then we will um, highlight up from there. So again, what I'll do now is I'll pause this, uh, block out the hair with the base coat and come back. And you know what, I'd love to pretend I was some type of painting genius and that that was intentional, but that was a really lucky looking guy. I'll just mix these two colours, but that's actually a really nice colour base for red. So. In the same way that you've seen with all my other colours. Let's now mix some more of that red into our brownie mix. Obviously the problem here is we can't really massively highlight this by dry brushing. Because we've already painted so much of the model and I don't want to risk getting too much in fact I don't want to risk getting any um, red over it but I have to say that that is by far and away the best red I've ever managed to achieve on hair. When I work with light, it's not a um, not a colour that I often paint. But even so, so what I'm just going to do here is basically just. Just painting the edges like an edge highlight. Because I can't actually get 
to win. That actually looks like ginger hair. Um, I was not expecting that. So now let's look at our two models side by side. So I need to add in the sleeves onto the copycat killer. I need to add in pretty much all of this is metal that he's wearing and obviously this is a metal his gun's metal so first off i'm going to add in the the white onto the sleeves so again i'll do that in the same way i did with with seamus and i'll start off with buff and then i use buff and then i use the ripened flesh wash so i'm going to do both of those off camera because you know how to wash and then I'll come back. <clears throat> so I shall do that shortly. So we've used the buff on the sleeves and also I've forgotten he was wearing gloves on the gloves and applied a wash away from flesh. And now I'm going to very simply, if I can find my paint, Some so I might wipe so that these areas go from being a not white to being a white. Very technical description of what's going on there because I'm obviously very technical. But basically, because you'll see the white it will make you think that the entirety of that area is actually white. And there we go, especially from a distance. So now we have two colours left to paint. Well, actually three, but anyway. Two main colours left to paint. We have the metals. So we can use a paintbrush. Here and here. And the hat. So, once again, I'll be pausing this and painting those. So, a scheme of white dinge for the hat and gun grey for the metal. I've decided that if I'm going with a ginger beard, I can't go with a green hat. I know some people, I know some people would, but it's just, it's just too much for me. So I shall be back once I've base coated those. In fact, I will tell a lie, because I'm going to base coat those and I'm also going to put a non oil wash, which is basically a standard black wash, over all the metals, and then I'll come back. We shall see you again. So we're back. So we've got Skaven Bike Dinge on the hat, 
and we've got gum grey and a wash of normal oil on the metal. So, quick highlight of our metal. And I'm just going to highlight the scissors here, I'm not going to bother with the, the gun because the gun is, quite frankly, far too small. I've also realised So I'll have to go after this because I'm not going to do anything else to that metal, I just want it there. I don't want to draw any attention to it, it's there and it can stay there. So, Dawnstone, and again, as with uh, Seamus. I'm actually going to do some quote unquote proper painting. Mm -hmm. Highlight on <laughs> all of our rims. And stand out as different and Separate hat. Here we go. So now I've only got two things left to do. Again, let's just use this brush to show you. You probably can't, I'm not sure if you can even see it, but he's wearing a it's a cravat, he's got a bow, so they're both going to be a, a very light green and I also need to um, add some non-oil to that area to basically block it out so that you can't really see it unless you look. So I'm going to base coat with the uh, Snarsnik, it's like a Skarsnik green for those um, and I am then also going to apply a wash of the Thonian camo shade to them and then I'll come back and do the final highlight of them. Right, so I shall see you in a bit. So, well that's that done. Now we're just going to, <coughs> excuse me, add a highlight to both of those areas.
and we are done. So as ever if you enjoyed watching this video please remember to like and subscribe down below if you want to find out more about table podcast you can find us at tablepodcast.com if you want to listen to the podcast itself then you can find that on itunes or all other good pro podcast providers by searching for table podcast and finally Please, especially if you're in the UK, check out our sponsor, which is leodisgames.com. And I'll leave you at the end of this video with a few decent photos of this guy, so you can see how he's come out. Thanks a lot. Bye.